we have two different types of stem cells. The traditional embryonic stem cell, which comes from early human embryos, and this new form called the induced pluripotent stem cell. By calling it pluripotent, we recognize that it has the ability to make any tissue in the body, a property that previously we thought only embryonic stem cells had. Now importantly, they're not identical, and we're still learning whether or not the induced pluripotent cells can be a full replacement for embryonic stem cells. They may one day, but certainly for the foreseeable future, we're going to move forward studying both types of stem cells. A little over two years ago, a Japanese scientist named Shinji Yamanaka discovered that if you took a small set of genes, which are normally expressed in embryonic stem cells, and you made them expressed in skin cells, it would turn the skin cells into embryonic stem cells. And these are the so-called iPS cells, the induced pluripotent stem cells. There's been a natural evolution in the technique itself. The practice that uh, Shinya Yamanaka introduced two and a half years ago was to carry these reprogramming genes in via viruses. The problem is, is that viruses insert themselves into the cell's DNA and can act as mutagens. It can actually induce the cells to become cancerous. So over the last couple of years, we and others have been working on ways of eliminating the viruses from the system. And now we have a new improved approach where we can, say, use a virus to carry these reprogramming genes into the cell, affect the reprogramming, the reversion to the embryonic state, but then we can remove the viruses. And that's one technique that we practice that leaves us with a viral-free cell which is a pristine cell that we can now study, and it would be a cell that would be safe to put back into a patient. The real long-term hope, though, is that we don't have to use viruses at all, that we could identify drugs which act on the same pathways as the viruses to reactivate this embryonic or pluripotent potential in every cell. Initially, we expect we'd do it in a Petri dish, but maybe in the long run, we'd even be able to learn how to affect these changes or transitions in cell fate in the actual identity of a cell from one type into another in your own body. That would be cell therapy. That would be the realization of one of the great ambitions of, of regenerative medicine.